Uh, we begin with our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together with the intro. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my pre plea for grace. Teach me your way. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, 
and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <coughs> you may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appoint an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. I have not have I not told you from of old and declared it. And you are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together the words of the gradual. Oh, the depth of their riches and wisdom. How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable are his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation 
has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groaning inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Like lives, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. <laughs> Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds also appeared. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And he left the crowd and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the close of the age. The son of man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the hymn.
Grace to you and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The uh, text for our meditation today comes from our Gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior, I'm sorry for our technical computer issues. Uh, that's what happens when you use technology. Uh, that laptop is probably six years old, and I probably need to talk to Mike Jacobs about replacing it. So, uh, dear friends in Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior, uh, I began my ministry a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, in 1986, at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Auburn, New York, uh, that's in upstate New York in the uh, Finger Lakes region. Uh, way back then, kind of like I have been for the last three weeks, I was the only pastor. And so I had to preach every single week. And twice a week during Lent and Advent. Uh, similar to Trinity right now, we worshipped about 55 people at a service. Unlike Trinity, uh, there was only one service on the weekend, not three. And my computer back then was not a little laptop like that. You probably remember big old uh, desktop computers. Uh, I was very, very technically, I had two floppy drives, cutting edge for the time. Uh, you little ones, if you don't know what floppy drive is, uh, Google it, you'll find out. Uh, the internet would not be available for probably another five years in homes and in businesses. Uh, but my duties, Included leading worship, uh, preaching law and gospel, offering the sacraments, visiting shut-ins and delinquent members. Uh, I held Sunday morning Bible class, Wednesday evening Bible class. Uh, I visited the hospitals and did weddings and funerals. Uh, there were no screens in worship back then. Uh, but I do remember it was one Lenten service. Uh, there was a four- or five-year-old sitting in the very front pew. And again, we had wooden pews, and he had very hard shoes on. And in the middle of my sermon, he decides to stand up and walk back and forth among the, along the pew, and you could just hear his feet clamping as he's walking back and forth. Uh, it kind of distracted me for a little bit, but really, it was kind of comical. The amenities may have been different. We didn't have all the tools that we have today. But the reality is, is that essentially the job was exactly the same as it is today. Preach the word, administer the sacraments, and that's the way it's been ever since. If you listen carefully... Uh, we are in Matthew chapter 13. Anybody know how many chapters there are in Matthew? 28. 28 chapters in the book of Matthew. The last two chapters, however, deal with the last week of Jesus' life and his arrest and crucifixion and resurrection and just before the ascension. So take out those two chapters and there are 26 chapters in Matthew, so we are smack dab in the middle of Jesus' ministry as we take a look at our text for today. And so, in the middle of his ministry, Jesus put another parable before them. See, Jesus was about to tell the crowds following him God's plan for sharing the gospel until the end of time. And so our text for today reads, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed into his field. It can also be translated, 
the rain of heaven has become like a man who has sown good seed into his field. The reason I bring that up is I think there's a difference there. I think there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the reign of heaven. You know, to me, the kingdom of heaven sounds like a place that you would go to. Let's go to the kingdom of heaven. Kind of like Pastor Ganey said, let's go to the kingdom of England. It's just a place. It may be a very good place, but it's just a place. But when you talk about the reign of heaven, it sounds like something's happening there. You know, you talk about the reign of King David or the reign of King Solomon. During both of those reigns, something was happening, something was, was going on. David and Solomon were in control, and they were ruling. And so during the reign of King David... David was securing for God and for God's people the land of Israel. He was taking care of all their enemies. He was getting rid of all of the enemies. He was defeating all the enemies. And during Solomon's reign, he builds that big, beautiful temple where the Lord would be worshipped and glorified, where sacrifices would be offered at the temple of God. And so things were happening during those reigns. Again, David and Solomon were ruling. Well, things were happening after Jesus' baptism and during the whole length of his ministry, and they are still happening today. Jesus says the reign of heaven has become like a man who has sown good seed in his field. Well, obviously, the man in this parable is God. It's actually Jesus. The man in this parable is Jesus, and he is sowing good seed in the field. Basically, what he's doing is he's going about his ministry. He is telling the people about the good news of salvation. He is preparing them for his death and resurrection. Basically, Jesus is planting Christians and believers in his field. But then, the wretchedness comes. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. That enemy, well, we all know, that's Satan. And what he has done is he has put unbelievers among the Christians. Sound familiar? Sound like the world we live in right now? You see, that parable doesn't just apply to Jesus 2,000 years ago. It applies to us right here today, right now. The ministry is still the same. The preaching of the gospel is still the same. Well, those servants of the man who sowed the field, they go to him and they, they want to immediately rip up those weeds and get rid of them. But... The man who owns the field knows that if they do that, they will inadvertently pull up some of the good wheat as well. So God's plan is to continue the ministry. God's plan is to keep preaching the gospel and administering the sacraments the way they have always been. Because you never know. The Holy Spirit may use one of those Christians to convert some of the weeds. Because God, the land over, he wants everyone to have a chance to repent and receive forgiveness. God wants the law and gospel to be preached to everyone. And so he says, no, don't go out and rip them up. There is going to be ministry as usual. We are going to keep preaching the gospel. We're going to keep administering the sacrament because that is the work of the church and that's the way it's going to be until Jesus comes to take us home. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. So I don't know what ministry is going to look like 50 years from now. I only know that 50 years from now, I hope to be with our Lord up in heaven. What kind of technology will be incorporated into worship? We have no idea. 
But what we do know is that, at least in the LCMS, the law and gospel will still be preached. The gospel will be shared with those who want to hear it. We will still be baptizing people and we will still be offering the Lord's Supper to God's people. The church will still be doing the work that started 2,000 years ago with Jesus and 50 years from now again. It might look a little bit different, but the message and the ministry will still be the same. A few months ago, a few months from now, hopefully sometime around Thanksgiving, we will be worshiping in a newly remodeled sanctuary. But what we preach up there will be the same as what we preach down here in the basement. And just as you don't have to take any steps to come up and receive the Lord's Supper down here, you're not going to have to do that up there either. Because we're moving the communion rail down to the floor level so you don't have to take any steps. You will be able to receive Christ's body and blood upstairs after the remodel. The long and short of it is this. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and administer the sacrament when we worshiped upstairs. And we will do the same as long as we're down here in the basement. And when we move back upstairs and dedicate our newly remodeled sanctuary to our God, we're going to be preaching the same law and gospel. Christ and Him crucified. We are going to share the gospel and offer the sacraments, really, until our Lord Jesus Christ comes and takes us home. It is work as usual, just as it was in Jesus' day. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God, which far surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. We bow our heads in prayer. Redeemer and Lord of hosts, the future is in your hands. Remove all fear from us and keep us mindful that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of heaven and earth, we give thanks that your Son, Jesus Christ, died to redeem the world and restore your creation. Until new life supplants the groanings of this age, lead us to steward your creation well not in waste, but in wise and diligent use with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, pour out your blessings of your Holy Spirit on the delegates who will assemble in the LCMS Convention this week. Give wisdom to those who propose, deliberate, and decide for the work and welfare of our Senate. Guard all who speak and all who listen, Give us courage to do with integrity what we promise. Bless our plans and actions and grant success. Only let our manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, guide the leaders of all nations that they would work for peace and justice in the face of conflict and discord. By or despite their efforts, protect the weak and defenseless, Lord, in your mercy, we commend to you all who endure the bondage of decay through infirmity and weakness and sickness. We pray especially for Ruth Ann Mork, Paul Machmeyer, Kristen Baker, Dylan Malkowski, Judy Scheffner, Pastor Bob Wolf, Helen Keller, Marilyn Valencourt, Dave Howe, Keith Mertens, Krista Parker, Ken and Clint Fick, Kim Weber, Lola Hargrove, Marty Berger, John Pollock, Myrna Hoover, Ron Benson, Luke and Micah Flick, and Tyler Zelko. Defend them against your, according to your will and strengthen and preserve their faith that they may rejoice that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that has been revealed to us. 
Lord, in your mercy, preserve us in the hope for what we do not see. Grant that we would receive your holy supper with hearts free from pride, presumption, or any other sin that would profane his precious body and blood. May we rejoice in his bodily presence for our forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have called us according to your purpose. You cause all things to work together for our good. Keep us safe until that day when you gather us with the saints into your kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really good, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.